70s at Mile High Stadium as it always is. Sold out as two arch rivals from the AFC West lock up the Oakland Raiders and the Denver Broncos. Don Cricky with John Brody and we're set to kick off here at Mile High Stadium. As you see the standing yesterday as you know San Diego defeated Seattle 21 14 Chargers atop the AFC West Oakland needs a win today over Denver to keep pace move into a first place tie. The Broncos seemingly out of it now with seven losses but they say we don't like Denver that's why we like to play them. Here come the Broncos with the kickoff return Larry Brunson comes out across the 10 yard line gets it to about the 12. Now let's go to New York to NFL 80 where Brian Campbell's going to update us on the Jets. Thank you Brian. Thanks we needed that. Here the New Orleans Saints on the first play from scrimmage. Dave Preston carries off tackle for the Broncos gets the ball across the 15 yard line. Greg Morton starting at quarterback but we could see Robinson Matt Robinson coming in early. Dave Preston and Jim Jensen are the runners for the Broncos. Rick Upchurch, their deep speed at one flank. Haven Mova is the veteran at the other. And Riley Odoms, who's playing way overweight and not right now in the great pleasure of his coaching staff, is the line to the left side. Odoms has played himself right out of shape. He's trained up to about 255. He was one of the best tight ends in the league. Now they go straight ahead and running with the ball is Jim Jensen. Here's the defensive line for the Oakland Raiders. John Matuzak at left end. Say he's having an all-pro year. The young Oklahoman Reggie Kinlaw at middle guard. Dave Browning's at the right end. Ted Hendricks having one of his best seasons. Left outside linebacker. Matt Millen and Bob Nelson the inside backers. Rod Martin is the other outside linebacker. Lester Hayes with 11 interceptions. He's caught more than a lot of wide receivers. Dwayne Osteen are the corners. Mike Davis and Burgess Owens are the safeties. It's first down and 10 now for the Broncos. They go right back to the run. And Preston, working hard, gets it across the 25-yard line, out close to the 28. Lester Hayes knocked him down. Don, you know, the last time these two teams played was uh, less than a month ago. Nine to three ball game. Sometimes when you look back, having just played a team that you feel that you didn't play as well as you could against, and you see on the stats that you rushed for 90 yards but only ran the ball about 20 times you say hey that's a little bit over a four point average we better run the ball a little more than we did we see Denver doing so real early they, their whole game is to pick up five yards on first down put the other team in a trap and they've done so on two series and Oakland's been a tough team to run on their last three games are giving up way under three yards a rush on the average on a second and five carry Hendricks and Hayes come up make the tackle So the knockdown will be at about the 27 yard line and that'll bring up third down now for Denver third down at about three. Oakland is according to Red Miller the coach of the Broncos stops the run early then brings in the pass rushers and the good defensive backs stops the path. They've been awful tough to score on the Raiders. Third down and about four now Morton takes a deep drop throws over the middle look at that stick. The hit is made. It's going to be close to a first down. As Lester Hayes and Mike Davis converge on Dave Preston. And now let's switch back to New York to NFL 80 and Brian Gumbel. Brian? Are you kidding me? I thought that game was already put in the fridge there. That is something. The Vikings rally back again and take the NFC Central. It's first and ten. The Broncos on the pass play did get the first down. Now they go to the run straight up the middle and take the ball to the 35-yard line. Dave Preston is stuck by Matt Millen. Big middle backer, one of two in there. Millen, a rookie from Penn State. Oakland has always had ex-defensive linemen playing the middle backer. Dan Connor was a former down lineman, so was Monty Johnson in Nebraska, and so was Matt Millen. He was an All-American last year at Penn State. He's kind of playing a down lineman as a linebacker, Donnie. You'll see that he plays the rush very hard on passes. He hasn't developed as he will in the next couple of years. Apple Big playing at almost 260. Dave Preston gets the ball again and takes the ball out across the 25 yard line and close to the 40. On a second down and seven carry. He's going to bring up third down now for the Broncos in about three. Nelson was on the stop. Preston's getting given the ball five times already early in the game and he's gained 17 yards. Red Miller coaching his first Bronco team that will not be in the playoffs. Reds had two divisional champions in the previous three years and of course the one team that went to the Super Bowl. It's third down and a long two now for the Broncos. Just short of their 40. Morton stands in, throws out of the backfield, makes the connection. Rob Leiter comes it up down the corner and gets inside the Oakland 40. 
Rod Martin finally gets it, John. And what he did is he fooled Rod Martin because Martin was looking at the near back. Now, Lytle was the, was the back away from his side. The backs crisscrossed at the snap of the ball. He got Rod Martin to get out of play. Now, watch. See the backs crossing each other? Martin thinks his back's gone. Following right in his path is, is Lytle. It's called a little trail pass. Once in a while, you fool a linebacker. Obviously, they saw something in the pictures that would indicate Martin to do so. So a 22-yard connection right Morton to Rob Lytle, the former Michigan runner. And the Raiders now starting them out a challenge on their first possession. They took the opening kickoff. Now they've taken it down to the 38-yard line of Oakland. Right back to the run. Nothing there. Oakland shuts it down. Dave Preston got the call in the two set. 6'8", 280 pounds hit it. Donnie, the impressive thing in the first drive is, number one, the Oakland Raider defense has not bent. <laughs> you know, it hasn't broken, but it hasn't even bent. It's been playing very well early, the last eight or nine ball games. It's been the total dominant force for the Raiders and has really put them in a playoff picture. Their offense is sputtered. If any indication of what's going to happen throughout the afternoon is what's been done by Denver early, uh, the best part of their group is a little suspect. Well, we'll see as they go right back to the run now in a second down and eighth play. Dave Preston gets the call and takes it down close to the 36. You're talking about how well they're playing, John. In the last three games, the Oakland defense has not allowed one third down completion against three pretty good opponents. Well, today they've allowed two. <laughs> yeah. Denver came out throwing. Denver has not had much offense this year. Last week, they had a bad second quarter. Turnovers have really hurt the Broncos. They've had 11 in the last two games. They were a playoff contender until a couple of weeks ago. They were 7-5, and five, then lost consecutively to Oakland on a Monday night. And last week at Kansas City, 31-14. On third down and eight, Morton stands in, loops it out there, and Haven Moses can't quite get to the ball. I tell you, you know, lots of times what you don't see on your television screen has created a turnover. Morton's got Haven Moses all the way across the field. He's going to hit him easily. But Cedric Hartman, one of the finest pass rushers that's played this game ever. He and Ted Hendricks been putting a lot of games together. You can see Cedric goes to the outside. Just enough pressure. Actually, number 73 hit his own man. Forced Morton to go high. They've got to turn it over. And now we have one of the really great long-range kickers in pro football, a former Oakland Raider, Fred Steinford, out of Boston College, ready to attempt a long field goal. They're going to hold... Matt Robinson will at the 44-yard line. Oops, what's this? He's looking to oh, throw him. he's got him. Oh, and oh this will this go the distance. Burgess Owens picks it off. It's a foot race, and Burgess Owens wins going away. So the Broncos go to the well with a trick play, and Burgess Owens takes it away from Riley Otis that goes the distance 63 yards and a touchdown and you know it it was a play that was devised to be a flea flicker where, where Robinson comes out throws the ball back but in the meantime Jim Jensen had beaten his man all the way down in the end zone for some reason Robinson never put his attention on him as a result seven points went the wrong way okay here comes Robinson Jensen is going down the field I don't know if he was looking for him but he never found him going out to Riley Odoms Comes up with the white shirt. Burgess Owens slips it in for six points, and the Raiders get off fast when it looks like they were down on the floor. Burgess was sure open, wasn't he? Burgess Owens takes to the distance. Officially, it's a 58-yard return, and the Raiders are on the board. The extra point by Chris Barr is drilled up and good, and so the Raiders strike quickly with their offense, not get on the field. A trick play by the Broncos off a fake field goal, and Burgess Owens intercepts in the flat, takes it 58 yards for a touchdown. And look at Matt Robinson, couldn't be feeling any worse. He hasn't played much in the last five or six games. Only one series of plays. Now he comes in, he gets a chance to kind of get off the schneid himself because he'd like to make something good happen. He knows he had great expectations when he came out here. Hasn't really been used. And it's gotta be, it's gotta be heartbreaking. On the other side of the coin, this man's all smiles. He really is, and that was the 32nd team interception by the Raiders this season. They're number one in the NFL. Washington second with 28 and Dallas third with 27. Burgess Owens, his third interception of the year, and it was a big one. Now San Diego Chargers are watching with great interest, hoping Denver can come up with a win here today. And Don, we have not mentioned a 26-point differential could be a factor if this game gets out of control. We'll get to it a little later. Now the kickoff in the mile-high atmosphere of Denver, Colorado by Bard. Drives Brunson deep in the end zone. He doesn't bring it out. Comes out to the 20 on a touchback. First and ten. It's only a guy that has great confidence in his own ability that can do a thing like that. And my hat's off to him. 
And here's a throw, and the strike is made. A perfect connection. We'd like to welcome all of you now who've been watching the Vikings and the Cleveland Browns. This is Don Cricky with John Brody at Mile High Stadium in Denver, where the Oakland Raiders, with their offense not yet on the field, lead the game 7-0. The Broncos try to fake field goal. The pass by Matt Robinson was intercepted and subsequently returned 58 yards for a Raider touchdown by Burgess Owens at 7-0 game. Now the Broncos with their second possession, they have the ball just short of their 40. It's a great day in Denver. Temperature in the 70s. Unseasonably warm for December. Clear sunny skies. Mile high sold out for the 80th consecutive home game of the Broncos. Now the Raiders shut down the run as Rob Lytle tries to go wide. And I'll tell you, it's a rare time indeed when they when they stuff their middle linebacker Matt Millen and still get the sort of pursuit that they did outside. You can tell a team that respects a, a linebacker by how many people hit him. First Odom, then Jensen. They're going to make sure he doesn't get in on the play. He's been their big playmaker against the run over this whole year, and it's rare when a rookie even plays at middle linebacker, and he's played it very well. He's getting some attention. Big Matt Millen, who came to camp at 271. They brought him down to about 255. Starting as a rookie. So now it's going to be second down and about 14. Loss on the play. Hand up goes to Lytle. And a slant play. He comes across the 35-yard line. Gets to about the 38. Interior blockers, Stuttered, Glassick, Bryant, Howard, and Miner. It's third down and 11 now for Denver. We're in the first quarter. 7.40 to play in it, and the clock is running. And the Oakland Raiders lead the game 7-0. Morton stands in. Lost one downfield. There's the veteran Haven Moses. Out of bounds at Drew. Try to catch him in between the seam, Don. Just took a little too much off the ball. Had to get it over the, the first man's head. That's the first, that's the first mistake the Denver offense has made. The Denver defense hasn't been on the field. It's seven to nothing. This is our first punt of the game now. Ira Matthews back deep for the Raiders. The big scores in today. They're all big coming down the stretch with a lot of teams vying for the playoffs. Houston beating Green Bay 22 to 3. Pittsburgh scoring twice in the fourth quarter to stay alive, beating Kansas City 21 16. Luke Prestridge, who hits it a long way. He's the second punter in the AFC, drills a line drive way downfield. Ira Matthews at his six. Here he comes. 15 to the 20, and Matthews turns the corner, gets across the 30, and has run out of bounds at the 31 yard line. So the Raiders send their offense on the field for the first time as they're in the lead. 7 0. The punt 55 yards, but Matthews brought it back 25. We'll be back at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. Don Crickey with John Brody. The Oakland Raiders offense just coming out on the field. They've not yet had the ball for a play from scrimmage, and they lead the game 7 0 on Burgess Owens. 58 yard return of an intercepted pass. So we got something good going here right now as the Raiders looking to keep pace with San Diego. Monk in a quarterback. And that goes to Arthur Whittington right up the middle, and he takes the ball to the 35 yard line. The Oakland offensive lineup, Jim Monk in a quarterback. Arthur Whittington starting backfield and replacing Kenny King. Mark Van Egan is the fullback. The wide receivers for the Raiders, Cliff Branch will be on one flank, Bob Chandler on another. Raymond Chester's the tight end. And those great big Oakland blockers who do such a great job. Shell up to Dolby, Marvin, and Lawrence. Now, Plunkett with time throws in the flat. And almost went the other way with Broncos picking it off. Here's a throw, though, to Arthur Whittington on a second down and sixth play that gets ahead across the 50 and down to the 47-yard line, an 18-yard game. Don, how he even picked him up was amazing to me because he was looking straight down the field. He had to know Whittington was standing out on the sideline. And then to be able to tell he had enough room to get the ball in there was another feat because he had to look over his blockers at this point. He comes to him late. I like the fact that he, the throw sometimes tell you something. He came out and fired the ball. I haven't seen him putting a lot on the ball in recent weeks. And uh, I think when he's firing it good and hard, they're a lot more effective. Well, the Raider offense has been down in recent weeks. Now they go to Van Egan on a first and 10 play. And he takes the ball down close to the 45-yard line. They were talking, John, about the Raider defense probably playing as well as it ever has. He said the Raider offense might have left for L.A. already, though, the last it's, three weeks. <laughs> it might be playing worse than I've ever seen the Raider offense play. And Plunkett's the one guy that can change that around. These are the guys that have to play for him. Van Egan, the big fullback. 
Rob Lytle apparently injured a right ankle, so he's going off right now. Five defensive backs in the game for the Broncos on a second down and seven play. They go to Arthur Whittington, a little back, but so very quick from SMU. Tries to turn wide, Foley takes a shot at him and knocks him out of bounds at the 40. It'll bring up third and about three. Barney Chavis, Reuben Carter, and Bryson Manor, the front three and the 3-4 Denver alignment. Rob Nair, the left outside, replacing Bob Swenson, who's been out for the season. Interior linebackers, Evans and Gratishar, Jackson, the other, and there are the deep backs. Louis Wright and Aaron Kyle at the corners, Bill Thompson and Steve Foley are the safeties. Honey, I don't think there's a healthy back in the whole stadium, let alone on either ball club. Broncos have lost just about all of theirs at one time or another this season. Kenny King not playing today for Oakland. Here's a pitch back. Trying to go wide with the ball. Kenny King comes in on that play and doesn't get very far. So he didn't start, but he did come in there. And Kenny King with the pitch back is knocked down by Foley. And it brings up fourth down. And Oakland's excellent punter comes out. <laughs> <laughs> They've got him all over the stadium. Bill Thompson, defensive back for Denver, said in an interview, we're not going to go. They're not going to go. If there's anybody we want to knock out of this thing, it's Oakland. We'll see, though. Right now, the Raiders are in the lead 7 nothing. I can remember looking at that stretcher, and we, uh, how Kilmer and I, when we came out on the field, we, the first thing we used to locate was the stretcher. We were playing the, the shotgun at the time, and we knew we better find it. Robbie Lytle's been taken in now for x-rays. Great guy, the leading punter in the conference. Almost 44 a chance, tries an angle punt to the near sidelines. It goes into the end zone, comes out on a touchback to Denver. So the Broncos go on offense, first and 10 through 20. A 40-yard punt. Ray Guy goes off. The Oakland defense comes back out. They put the only points of this game on the board. It's 7-0 Oakland. We'll be back after this. We've had a pitching change here in Denver. Matt Robinson, who's 0 for 1 today, you remember that fake field goal that he threw out into the flat on a pass attempt that was returned by Burgess Owens for the game's only score is now going from scrimmage. And he got received like every quarterback does. It's thrown an interception for a touchdown. First back through. Big back from Iowa. Jim Jensen takes it ahead across the 20, now close to the 24 as the Broncos continue to run right at the Raiders. Bob Nelson and Mike Davis were on the stop for Oakland. The thinking here, John, with making the move to Matt Robinson so early. Well, it was very definitely predetermined, Don, because uh, Craig Morton was playing very well during the ball game, and he's played well over the past six or seven weeks. Actually, he put them back into contention after they had worked themselves out of it. And there's another quarterback they might want to look at before the day's over or in the next ball game. Now, Matt Robinson needs playing time. He's only played 12 or 13 full ball games in his whole career, so he's got to get in, and they have to find out if he can do it. He just hit it there, a perfect strike to Jensen, and Jensen is all the way out to midfield. A 28-yard throw and subsequent run for the first down brings the ball across the midfield line into the Denver, the Oakland side of the field. And the things he has, you know, people are looking for if you're a coach is how disciplined is his, is his drop. Does he go back, plant, stay in there, and wait for somebody to come open? He did that perfectly on that play. Found a receiver that came open late. As a result, Hit Jensen, was able to pick up a first down. They get the ball inside the Raider 50. So Matt Robinson, who came to Denver from the New York Jets for two number one draft choices, makes that throw from scrimmage a perfect strike, and it's first and ten now for the Broncos. He's going to start pitching again. He's looking it up church long, but swings it out. Jensen out of the backfield, gets the ball. He's inside the 40. It's another Denver first down. I'll tell you what I get the feeling of. Sometimes an interception pass even though it scores seven points for the other team, could do more for an individual. When he got the reception he got, if Matt Robinson is made of what I think he's made of, it made him hot. And you find a quarterback that's hot and says, Violet, fellas, we're just going to have a go at him. And if he's got that sort of maturity after four years of play, the Raiders could be in for a lot of chasing throughout the afternoon. I've seen it happen more than once. I've always thought Matt Robinson was an excellent prospect. He's had six weeks to sit on the bench and think about it. Now he's got a chance to do something about it. He came out of the University of Georgia, a relatively low draft choice of the Jets, but distinguished himself in limited playing time. And then there was the con controversy last year whether or not he should be starting. The incumbent should be going with it. They finally kept Richard Todd and traded Matt Robinson out here. This time, Preston's run is knocked down by Dave Browning at about the 33-yard line. 
Robinson likes to take a nice deep drop, look over everybody. He's a strong arm quarterback. Everybody does. <laughs> it's nice to look over everybody, but he is. And this is a tough team to get a look because the Raiders are right up there among the leaders in sacks. San Diego's number one with 58. Oakland has 46. They had 33 all of last year. They're third in the NFL right now in sacks. Here's Jensen. Running hard and Browning finally runs him down, but he's inside the 30 on a second down and six carry. Denver has really been getting off the ball well. Stutter, Glassic, Brian Howard, Minor. Now to go with two tight ends, Odom's in and Ron Egloff. Third down and a yard for the Broncos. Ball at the 28-yard line of Oakland. 135 to play in the first quarter. And it's 7-0 Oakland. Handoff goes and gets it. Leads the blocking and Dave Preston takes it ahead. Hey, we talked about Riley Odoms earlier, Don. You mentioned that he went from 225 and an excellent pass catcher to 255 playing like a guard. Take a look at this block. Number 88. Ted Hendricks is a very difficult man to move off the line of scrimmage. He creates a hole just big enough for them to pick up a first down. He did his job that time. He sure did. Maybe the big guy wants to move inside. <laughs> I think they're going to accommodate him. At 255, I can remember Ron Kramer, the fellow that played for the Green Bay Packers. They said he weighed 255, but I think it was closer to 275, <laughs> and it didn't slow him down much. Now the Broncos are not slowed down as they continue to move the ball at Oakland. They've moved the ball well. They had the one mistake that led to the game's only points. The interception returned by Burgess Owens for a touchdown. Robinson played faking very nicely. Throws. He's got Odom. Riley Edwards takes out of the finger and goes down at the three-yard line. Lester Hayes at 190 pounds. Takes oh. Riley Odom's at 250 plus. Riley made an excellent catch. The play was really made by Robinson's fake. He fooled Hendricks enough to where he created an opening. Odoms ran right by Hendricks, opened up a natural gap, and Robinson put the ball right where it had to be thrown. He's been very impressive since he gave them seven. He figures he might as well get, him, get his own group a few. He's going to do it, looks like. He's got him down inside the five now. That was a 23-yard gainer. Since he's come in from scrimmage, Robinson's put the ball in the air four times, has completed three for 63 yards. So now the Broncos are challenging. 22 seconds in the clock running first quarter. 7-0 Oakland. Second back. Preston takes a look. Not much there, but he dives on down close to the one. Well, those were three big yards, Donnie. He was stopped stiff at the line of scrimmage. Found a way to pick up a couple. Kinlaw got him. Middle guard for the Raiders. Reggie Kinlaw in his second year from Oklahoma. That's it for the first quarter. Gun sounds, and now... Some cheers start to cascade down from sold out Mile High Stadium as the Broncos are moving the ball and they're close to a touchdown. They'll be trying for it when we open the second quarter after this. With John Brody, this is Don Crickey back at Mile High Stadium in Denver where the Oakland Raiders are holding to a 7 0 lead, but that could change quickly. You see the first quarter stats. The Raiders with not much running. The Broncos with a lot of offense, but no points yet. They're close, though. They come out of the huddle. Ball is down inside the two-yard line. They go to Preston, and he gets into the end zone standing up. So Dave Preston puts a touchdown on the board for Denver, and now he gets some guys swinging out there. Listen, this game, these, these people are geared. The oxygen level's very low up here in Mile High, but it's lower down there on the field for each individual player because of the importance of the ball game. And the impressiveness to me is the way two young offensive linemen have played during that entire drive. You've got Bishop on one side and Kelvin Clark on the other. Second-year player out of Nebraska. They're pushing the Raider defense around, and Preston comes in. You see Riley Odoms. You see Claudie Miner. But the guard is Keith Bishop. He gets a little surge, and they get in the end zone. We're also taking a look at some new people. Keith Bishop at one guard for Paul Howard, who's out with the flu. And Kelvin Clark at left tackle. And that was about as good a drive as the Broncos had put up all year. 80 yards and nine plays. Dave Preston on the payoff end and Fred Steinfort with the point after. And so, on the opening play of the second quarter, the Broncos tie it up. It's 7-7 at Mile High Stadium. Thanks, Brian. Fred Steinfort ready to kick off now as Matt Robinson shows something of what he's made of. After throwing that early interception on the fake field goal, he drives the Broncos down the field and hands up to Preston finally for the touchdown. It's tied. Now Ira Matthews on the kickoff return takes it across the 20. There's also a penalty marker down. We'll get that call with 14.46 left to play in the first half. 
Vic Jorgensen, our referee, and a hold is called against the Raiders. They'll close out the regular season next Sunday at Giants Stadium in New Jersey against the New York Giants. You know, Don, I so often hear the term, I think that if the Raiders have to win the ball game, so they'll be the team. Holding number 56, receiving team, first down. They'll be the team that's trying harder, therefore they'll be the team that wins. I found it to work just the opposite on several occasions. Sometimes you want to win so bad, you're not quite willing to take the chances you have to take to play this game effectively. And I can, I can point back to ball games throughout the year that have been played in key situations. 10 to 7, Buffalo in, in uh, L.A. last week. You see these guys, 9 to 3 the last time they played. 7, 6 to nothing, Pittsburgh and Houston. I mean, you can see it all up and down the board. The Raiders are going to have to come after it and start firing the ball the way Plunkett did the first three games he got into the game. Well, he goes to Arthur Whittington on that first down play, and Whittington, taking the ball out from his 11-yard line, gets it out close to the 14. A number of plays, the Broncos have controlled the ball and the clock. Yes, sir, but not the scoreboard. <laughs> Six plays, seven points, and none of them by Oakland's offense. The Raider offense, unproductive in recent weeks. They like to go deep. Bob Chandler, wide receiver, set to the right. Cliff Branch, a world-class sprinter from Colorado, is out in the left lane. And Plunkett likes to try to hit him. Won't be long. Here's a handoff again to Arthur Whittington. Raiders closed down quickly. Whittington didn't work with a lot of size, about 178. If he breaks that crust, he'll take it. Breaking that crust is a little tougher than design. Big people up front for Denver. Javis, Carter, and Bryson Manor. Now Whittington comes out of the game. You know, I, I noticed that uh, Whittington's coming out, Kenny King's going in in third down situations, but King is coming on the field limping. It's one thing if you're going off the field limping, but if you're running back coming on at limping, you're really in trouble. He's had an ankle problem much of the year. Plunkett's only thrown once in the game. He's completed it for 18 yards. It's third down and five. Plunkett with a deep drop. Rulon Jones almost got it. Now Plunkett runs with the ball. Does all right. And he picked up a first down with a nifty little move right there about the 20-yard line, Bartzi. He really had to put a move on because he had to get to the 21, and that's just where he got with that change of pace. Don, let's take a look. There has been some statements about Jim Plunkett's undisciplined drop. Five yards, ten yards, you name it. Something has to happen where you go by it back the same distance every time. You can see people are coming back at you. The surge was excellent. There was nowhere Plunkett could go that time. He had to take the course he took and picked up the first on his own. Plunkett's been quite a story, quite an odyssey out of Stanford. The Heisman Trophy year, the Maxwell Award back in 70. Quarterback in the upset in the Rose Bowl of Ohio State. Now he eludes the pass rush again. He lets her rip, and he's got a man coming back at the ball incomplete. His tight end, Casper Chester, comes back at the ball. The comments that are made about Jim Plunkett not standing in the same spot where the offensive line feels secure with him around him uh, doesn't come into play because they've been back there as quick as he has. He's moving well. Now it's going to be second down and 10 for the Raiders. They go to the run. Here's Kenny King turning the corner. Bad ankle and all. The Denver Broncos are giving away nothing. Tom Jackson, who's as fast as most of the wide receivers in this league, comes from the outside linebacker position. He really wants to beat the Raiders. We don't go, they don't go, says Jackson. Contrary to what the Raiders would like to do, Donnie, they're going to have to fire that ball up because if, when you have two running backs, both Whittington and King are hurt. All right? They don't feature the run that much when they're healthy, but when they're hurt, they better put the ball up. Raiders now send two wide receivers out to the right. Chandler is wide. Branch is in the slot. And Chester, the tight end who can go deep, is on the left side. Here's Plunkett with a drop. Big rush. Stands in. Let's a rip long. Going for the ball is Raymond. Chester, he has the football at the 40. And is down inside the 35-yard line. A perfect connection. Plunkett with the home run ball. And his tight end, Raymond Chester, is underneath it. 47 yards downfield. Don, I've seen... Jim Plunkett in five instrumental plays offensively. He's done the only thing that he could do from the position he stood. You can see he feels the pressure up front. It's getting pretty close to him, but he hangs in there, puts the ball in between two defenders, hits Raymond Chester on the dead run, and, you know, we had a pretty good angle to see what Plunkett could see. He couldn't see squat down there. All right, here's, here's Bob Chandler trying to get rid of Louis Wright unsuccessfully, but the man he did pick out was open, came up with the ball. <laughs> and it's taken Need five. That. Need <laughs> that up here. 
And now the Raiders get their first big play from the offense of this day. Game is tied 7-7. Plunkett taking a look again. Wants some more of it. He's got a man open. Derek Ramsey, another tight end in the game, going for the football. Ramsey was wide open. The former quarterback at Kentucky, a tight end at Oakland. He had the defense put away. You, you got that straight. And Plunkett threw the ball straight over Ramsey's head. It's the toughest play in the world for both a quarterback to throw and a receiver to catch. If you can't find the ball, you can't accelerate to get it. And when you're looking straight back over your shoulder and the ball's coming right, from, right over the back of your head, to find it is tough. Red Miller and his Bronco defense been tough all season, although the offense hasn't put up a lot of points for them. Now it's second down and 10 for the Raiders. In a tie game, 7-7, seven, seven, second quarter, Plunkett rolls out again. Throws and, oh, oh that's right. They're flying in from every direction here. They went to get Cliff Branch's head, and they got it. Don Plunkett, first of all, had Branch one-on-one -on -one and had him open, but he had to move out of the pocket. Whether he had to move out or he elected to move out, it's hard for me to comment on. But you'll see Branch, when he gets down the field and he makes his break, he's on a one-on-one -on -one situation out there on the corner. Now, I don't care what Kyle's doing. He, he can't cover Cliff Branch one-on-one. -on -one. The only way he can do it is get after his helmet and try to keep him from scoring. As they say, there's only about six guys in the world faster than Cliff Branch, and none of them play for Denver. So they got to keep him <laughs> contained. He'll go deep. Now it's a 12-yard assessment on the penalty. Here's Kenny King. He's got lots of moves left despite the bad wheel. And Kenny King on a first down carry comes down to the 18-yard line. He got four. The middle guard, big Reuben Carter, made the knockdown. Hey, he can, he'll be able to run the ball if his offensive line that time up Sean Shell moved people out of there the way they did then. Up Sean Shell have been doing it for a long time on the left side. Art Shell in his 13th year at left tackle and Gene Up his 14th season at left guard. Nobody knows how big Art Shell is. They haven't weighed him in 10 years. <laughs> He's got to be 3 0 at least. And he can move. Now it's second down and six. Plunkett. Deep drop. Throws on the run. And Chandler can't hang on to the fastball. He didn't drop many. We were talking, John, about his odyssey from Stanford. The great years, the Heisman, the Maxwell, the victory over Ohio State in the Rose Bowl, the upset, and the number one draft choice in the league going to New England. The great first season with 19 touchdown passes, then the injuries, the shoulder operation, three various knee operations, and finally, he come to, came to Oakland as a free agent. Now he's looking like the Jim Plunkett of old. He's trying to get to Ray Chester. He's got him out there, but Chester can't hold on at the back of the end zone. And a third down and sixth play, Plunkett almost connects for the strike. The field goal unit is out. And that was a good enough throw, Don, to where a great catch by Raymond Chester, who's made many. I think this guy is great. When, when he's running away from, from the quarterback and the ball is thrown over his head, he's as fine at catching the ball with his arms outstretched as any player at tight end in this game. He'll bring down seven or eight out of ten of those. That could easily have been a touchdown. It was a good throw by Plunkett. A very good throw almost there. Now the field goal unit is out, and Chris Barr will try to break the tie with Bob Chandler holding. Barr's had some problems. He's been good in close, but he's 4 of 16 outside the 40. This will be a 36-yard attempt. That was a ground ball. I think there was a little problem on the hole there, Don. I think Bob Chandler's is as dependable a holder as you'll find. That time, I do not think the ball was set down properly. I don't know if we'll be able to see it in the replay. Yeah. A hard hit ground ball. <laughs> Only the holder and kicker know, pal, but let's see. We might be able to pick it out. Yep, yeah. you can see the ball went right down on the ground just before he made contact. Larry Cirillo, our producer today for NBC. Ted Nathanson, our director. The game is tied 7-7. We'll come back when Denver has the ball right after this. We mentioned there might have been a problem between holder and kicker. Watch the ball just before Barr's foot gets to it. It's laying flat along the, along the surface of the turf. Very difficult to get it up over the, over the goal post. Did not work. Denver takes over the ball, first and 10 at their 20. Up Church's wide left. Raiders play those wide receivers tight. They bump and run with him. Robinson wants to put it up. He does. Guns the ball downfield. It's caught. Haven Moses. They're looking at Riley Odom as a tight end. He couldn't get it. But Haven Moses was a in a deeper pattern. 
and <laughs> makes the big reception for a first down to the 43. Yes, sir. Those are great patterns. If you don't hit one, get the other. I'm not sure whether he was throwing the ball to Odoms or whether he was waiting for Moses. I do know that Odoms had run out of the pattern all the way through. He actually tipped the ball, and Moses still came up with it. Three years ago, that, of course, would have been illegal. Subsequent touches by offensive players, but now it goes. So Robinson, after throwing that early interception that Burgess Owens ran back for a touchdown off the fake field goal, is really throwing strikes. It's first and 10 out to the 43. Pitch back goes, and Preston, a slash, comes out across the 40 to the 44-yard line. Got only one. Right now, in this case, they knew he had a bad, a bad limb, but they still wouldn't have picked him on the first round. You follow me? It's one of those deals that Oakland comes up with year in and year out, and he just played super. He's right on the nose of the best offensive lineman that Denver Broncos have, center Bill Bryant. Robinson throws out of the backfield. Uh-oh, free ball, and Lester Hayes has his 12th interception. Lester's caught more than a lot of wide receivers. We've got a penalty down. I'd, it's in the area where it could be holding, but you never know. Raiders think it holding, is. Number 54, offense. Decline, first down. They got the rookie, Keith Bishop, who's in at right guard in a hole, but it, of course, is declined as the Raiders get the interception. We'll watch again now as Lester Hayes gets number 12. He's the National Football League leader. And let's watch number 54. Bishop got a piece of Matusak. I'd say, uh, rather than let him get your quarterbacks, I'll take the hold. Yeah. Well, Lester Hayes with 12 interceptions and three of previous interceptions were called back because of penalties. That's how good he's been. We'll be back. Jim Jensen banged up the shoulder. He's being attended to on the sideline by the Denver trainer. While he is, the Oakland offense is on the field. They have the ball after the interception by Lester Hayes at the 47-yard line of Denver. Game is tied 7 off. Plunkett throws, has a man open. Chester makes the reception, gets down to the 40 at gain of eight. And there was a, there's an instance where a wide receiver who's not really in the pattern, that time Cliff Branch, made the play possible. I'll show you why. He's here now. You see Kyle coming up. If he takes an inside release, he runs Kyle right into the area where the ball was thrown. He wisely takes the outside release. Kyle has to relate, go on inside, but it's after the ball is completed. Aaron Kyle's the former Dallas Cowboy from Wyoming, gained free agent status this year, and moves into the right cornerback position for Denver. Here's a handoff. Van Egan, that big fullback from Colgate, who's been the Raiders' leading rusher three previous seasons. Takes it down inside the 35-yard line for a first down. The scores rolling in from the east, many of them final now. The New England Patriots still alive, a game behind Buffalo in the AFC East. Ferguson, the Buffalo quarterback, went out with an ankle injury. Tommy Kramer with three fourth-quarter touchdown passes pitches the Vikings over the Browns. NFC Central lead. Houston beating Green Bay 22 to 3 and Pittsburgh rallying with two fourth quarter touchdowns to beat Kansas City. Staying alive. Staying alive is it. They'll next go to San Diego, the Steelers here on a first down carry. They go right back. And the fullback Van Egan takes it ahead inside the 30. Philadelphia gets back on track after losing its previous two games. Defeats St. Louis 17 to 3 at Veterans Stadium. Atlanta wins the first divisional championship in the history of the franchise, routing San Francisco 35-10. And they didn't just eke in either. No, sir. They're, they're probably the best team in the game right at this given day. Well, the New York Times football computer, which puts everything into it, as New Orleans winning its first game, ranks Atlanta as number one. Ooh. Out of the backfield comes Van Egan. The throw from Plunkett's a little low. Incomplete. And a second and five play. It'll be third down at five. And meanwhile, here at Mile High Stadium, we just saw an illustration of poor communication between quarterback and receiver. It's one of those things that happens when the guy's so wide open, he forgets to continue with his pattern and stop just as Plunkett let go of the ball. And a simple little completion and a big first down turns into a third and five. And he'll probably be thrown again. Here goes Plunkett taking the deep drop on third and five. Stands in, gets it away, and did well to do that. Coming on a linebacker blitz was Nairn, number 58. Got to Jim Plunkett just as he was releasing the ball. Now the field goal unit comes back out. Hoping for better things. He beats a real bad field goal attempt today. Remember the first one of the day? A fake. Robinson throws. Burgess Owens intercepts. 58 yards untouched for the first score of the game for Oakland. And then the previous drive. 
Jam to put the ball down. Lost it. Chris Park kicked the ground ball. Your holder is a very important part of the team, and he's been one of the best holders in this game for a long time. At Rocky Mountain Thunder starting up as Chris Bowers into the ball and drills it right through a 44 yard attempt and Bowers right there and he breaks the tie with 5.55 left to play in the first half. The Oakland Raiders take the lead at 10 to 7. Got some old announcers looking out from the sideline here Brian. <laughs> it's tough. That guy package. Right now, Chris Barr, who just hit the 44-yard field goal, kicks off. You see it from the ground level as the receiver sees it. It's taken by Larry Brooks, and he won't bring it out. It's out to the 20 with 5.50 to play in the first half, and the Raiders now in the lead 10 to 7. Mile High Stadium sold out again on an unseasonably warm day in Denver. Temperature in the low 70s. Coach Miller, in his fourth season, disappointed his team will not be going to the playoffs. The Raiders... Right now in the lead in this game, 10-7, looking to keep pace with San Diego. Raiders need a win to stay atop the division in a tie with San Diego. Matt Robinson has thrown six passes. That one's hit the ground, four completed, two intercepted. Got a problem here. Throws it out to Preston. Incomplete, it'll be second down at 10. Now let's go back to New York to NFL 80 and Bryant Gumbel. Bryant? Thank you, Don Cricky. In Chicago, the Bears are driving for a field goal that could push them over the top against Cincinnati. Vince Evans completing 32 yards to James Scott. The Bears have worked the ball down to the 30. That ball game deadlocked at 14 all with less than 30 seconds to play. Let's go back to Don Cricky at mile high. Well, the Denver Broncos break the huddle now. Second down and 10. The Broncos with turnover problems in the recent weeks. They've turned the ball over now 13 times in the last three games, including this one. We have 5.54 to play in the first half on second down and 10. The give is up the middle. Preston carries across the 20 and gets to about the 22. The Raiders in the last three games are allowing the opposition on the average only 2.6 yards a rush. Then they've been intercepting more than any team in the NFL when they forced them to throw. On that play, John Matuzak and Reggie Kinlaw were on the stop. You know, Don, in talking to Charlie Sumner, who is their defensive coordinator, he has his his statement is that the simpler I keep it the better these guys play and Cedric Hardman is one who, who has given Charlie all the credit he played in San Francisco for a number of years and he said hey there is no doubt in any of our defensive players minds as to what we're supposed to do because the assignments are so simple well they had the pass rushing group in there now on third and seven and something about that look doesn't please Matt Robinson while we have a break in the action let's go back to New York and Brian Gumbel Okay, five minutes to play here at Mile High Stadium. First half, Broncos are trailing in the game 10-7, and they have the ball at their 18-yard line. It'll bring up third down and 12 as the Raiders put in their pass rushers. Cedric Hartman at right end. Dave Browning at right tackle. John Matuzak moves into tackle. And Joe Campbell, a former number one in New Orleans, who joined the Raiders this season, is in at left end. They got those linebackers, and here they come. Here comes Hendricks. They pick him up. After long, free ball. Looks like the Raiders might have it. Now, nope, Broncos got it back, but they'll have to kick it away, and the Raiders should come out of this with good field position. Hendricks coming on a bliss, jumped right over the guy blocking him. Well, what he does is he tries to work on a mismatch. He tries to work it so that he's running against the back. That time he was able to do so. They give him a lot of leeway. They let him take whatever hold he sees fit to take. You can see when he gets back there, he just went right around the left guard. Or the center, that's Bill Bryan, who's been having a fine year, but he didn't have a fine play. <laughs> A lot of Raiders sneaking around the quarterback there. Ira Matthews is back deep. Luke Prestridge ready to punt from his end zone. Raiders put on the big rush and Prestridge unloads. Drives Ira Matthews back to his 34. Here he comes. And Matthews darts ahead, gets across the 45, hopefully out to the 47-yard line. So, a 57-yard punt by Luke Prestridge and a 12-yard return, and the Raiders are set to go back on offense with a three-point lead. Rob Lytle back on the playing field. That's good to see. He was taken off for a check of a bad ankle, and Dan Pastorini back in mobile. 
He went out with a real serious injury early in the year, fractured a leg. And he says he's back and he's ready to play, and you can tell by his expression he's not too happy about not being involved. He's one guy that likes to be in the middle of things, and for the first time in his life, he's not. Jim Puckett's there in his stead, and Rulon Jones, the big pass rusher, the rookie that is so high on, shows his stuff. They say Rulon's tough. He'll take on a moving car. Well, they didn't let him play early in the season, Don, because they said he doesn't practice very well. He's a bit lethargic when he's in practice, and they didn't really know the, the reaction he'd have when he played in the game. You can see he's, he's quite active once he gets in the game, and uh, it's really given Red Miller a chance to use those two three-man defensive lines that he likes to alternate, which puts pressure on the offensive lineman because when they're playing against someone different, it changes the way they have to play. Right now, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. After the sack, it's second down and 19 for the Raiders, and Jim Plunkett looking at that big pass rush down in the three points and ready to come calls a timeout. Hey, when you get when you get dropped for an, for a nine yard loss, you you're oftentimes a little fuzzy by the time you come to the line of scrimmage for the next play, and it can have an effect on what you see defensively. Either that happened or possibly Delay a game. he just didn't like uh, what he saw and let it run out. He did. Didn't use the timeout, took the five yards instead. So instead of second and 19, he'll give it a shot from second and 24. Still better than wasting the timeout. Second down and 24, ball at the 33-yard line of the Raiders. They lead the game 10-7 with 3.29 to play in the first half. Bunkett stands in, takes his time. Here's the problem. He eludes it, but not for long. Rulon Jones gets him again. Got the folks worked up here, Rulon Jones. Well, I tell you what, he ought to have Plunkett pretty well worked up. He's got about four miles to go for a first down. That's when a quarterback gets hurt. It's when he's standing back there trying to make something happen and starts to move out of the pocket going sideways. If you're going to move out, I've found the most success happens when you come on up. Get up. Get up, Jim. Somewhere. Because once you start to go sideways, you get hit from all kind of angles, and he's been taking a beating for the last five games that way. And he's taken a beating the last couple of plays now as they are thrown all the way back to a third and 38 situation. The ball at the 17-yard line of the Raiders. They just looks for a little room. Arthur Whittington doing his best. There's not much there. He got to the 21. Don Latimer in the defensive line made the stop. Going to take a 36-yard punt to get back to the line of scrimmage. Boy, isn't that the truth? So Ray Guy will come in now to hit it as far as he can as big Rulon Jones from Utah State, a rookie. Really got after it. Two sacks. That sequence of down. This is Ray Guy's second punt of the day. His first was for 40 yards. And he was angling for the sideline. Now he's going to try to unload. Great average. Best in the American Conference. Second best in the NFL. To Dave Jennings of the Giants. Rick Upchurch is way back for Denver. Standing at his 27-yard line. Two-minute warning is given as the Raiders let the clock wind down to two. Their three-point lead still on the board. It's 10-7 Oakland. The Raiders trying to keep pace with a win here today. Remain in a first-place tie with San Diego with a week to go. Sam Bogosian talking to his offensive lineman. He's got a lot to talk about. You know, some of it's Plunkett and some of it is the offensive line. What is evident is the communication is not there between quarterback and offensive line in throwing situations. Running the ball, they're moving off the ball, they're moving people around. Throwing-wise, they're not getting protection. Whoever fault it is, they've got to get it done. Well, they've had some sack problems this year. They came into the game with their quarterbacks at Oakland sacked 41 times. <laughs> Extraordinarily high for a Raider team. Ray Guy standing back at his eight-yard line gets the snap. Doesn't go too far. They were moving on the ball and almost got a piece of it. Ball is taken by an up back and coming up the field with the ball. Mike Harden, who gets it across midfield down to the 48. Now let's go back to New York after a 38-yard punt to Bryant Gumbel. Bengals are getting tough down the stretch of this season. They're not going to go to the playoffs, but they're going to decide about some other teams, maybe Cleveland. They'll be playing the Browns next week. Here's a handoff to John Keyworth on a first down play for Denver. He takes the ball inside the 40 and is thrown back. 
Lester Hayes, who had his 12th interception of the year earlier in this game, made the tackle. Steinford is getting ready for some long-range duty if need be, and he can do it. Has an unbelievable record this season from way out. On second down and eight, a throw goes up the middle. Free right. football. It's up for grabs, and the Raiders have it. Look at that ball. Beautifully picked up by Mike Davis, the strong safety. Never broke stride. Got it on the one hop, and now the Raiders turn it right around and get the ball at their 48-yard line. Very well executed play by the offense of Denver until he got hit. That's the third turnover in bad situations when it looked like they were moving. Third turnover of the game, two interceptions of Matt Robinson. Now a fumble recovery, and Oakland has the ball back. Matt Robinson shaken up. Both quarterbacks have felt the pressure today. He's smiling about it. Well, he's all right. I think what happened is his life gets very rough for a quarterback, as we see Tom Glassick, who also got shaken up on the play when you've thrown an interception. He comes back, and you'll notice he's standing extremely still in the pocket, which is an excellent quality. Now the ball gets dropped. As it does, a lot of times the quarterback's about the only cat in town left to make the play. He sticks his head in there and almost got it knocked off. The Raiders have the ball with 127 left to play in the first half. They're in the lead. 10 to 7. Right now for an update on NFL 8, let's go back to Bryant Gumbel in New York. Okay, Bryant, here we go at mile high. 127 left to go in the first half. Raiders have the ball. Their 48-yard line. Plunkett. The deep, deep drop. He knows what's coming. Swings it out to Mark Van Egan, his fullback. There's a couple guys that knocked him down, and Van Egan gets a hit for 11 yards and a first down, down to the 41. On first down, Donnie, and they've got to hurry up, so it won't take long saying it. Mark Van Egan has been open on play-action passes throughout the entire first half. It's the second time they've elected to go to him, the first time they've hit him. The lights are completely out right now for Tom Jackson. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. With John Brody, this is Don Cricky, Tom Jackson up and okay coming off the field. We watch Van Egan. Boy, when you get somebody in the middle of the field, the action, the action level starts from all different directions. Van Egan got hit pretty hard by two linebackers that are exceptional. One of them didn't come out of it very well. He'll be back. He will stick his nose in there right into a butt saw. Look at Cincinnati. Beats the Bears. Jack Thompson got him off fast. He's going to be a good one. Same throw to Owen. Washington State. Here's Plunkett now. First and ten. That's Let's go long. Branch is out there. He's inside the 20. And Cliff Branch is down to the 15-yard line. The clock winds down to 103, and it's stopped by an Oakland timeout. A 26-yard gain. Here it is again, John. Cliff Branch ran it superb pattern it was very easy when you get somebody in motion they can get away from the linebackers he's coming right across Plunkett's face Jim had no problem finding him less problem hitting him they pick up a big first down about the 16 yard line they've got two timeouts left and a whole minute and three seconds to play with so the Raiders with not a lot of time left 103 left to go are challenging again and again they send their two wide receivers out wide to the right Chandler and Branch. Reception for 26 yards a moment ago by Branch was his first of the day. Plunkett on first down from the 16. He's going to run the ball. He's got some room. He had room to go a lot farther, it looked like. Well, it looks like there's more room than there actually is if he if he did commit to run, but I believe he had enough, enough room, as you said, Don, to slide it down there within seven or eight yards of the goal line. But when you get your attention on a receiver, it's hard to take it off. Next Saturday, start your day with NFL 80 and host Brian Gumbel bringing you all the inside news on the climactic final weekend of the regular season, plus a special feature on the sounds of football. Then stay tuned for a unique treatment of the game between the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins from the Orange Bowl, immediately following its college basketball as the Indiana Hoosiers meet the North Carolina Tar Heels, all here on NBC Sports next Saturday. On second and ten, Plunkett takes a look, swings it out. Raymond Jester has the ball, but the defense is right with him. Aaron Kyle, the right side corner, makes the knockdown at the 11. It'll bring up third down and six. And the Raiders call a timeout. Good pass protection on that play. Crossing pattern takes a lot of time to develop, even though it was thrown for four or five yards. Chester had to come all the way from his left side, about 15, 18 yards, in order to make the reception, and that takes time. That's well, he's quite a guy. He grew up in San Jose, California. His mother's blind. His father's partially blind. Helped work his way through high school, working every day in a grocery store before and after school. Rose to the heights in 70. 
Here's the throw for a touchdown in the end zone to Bob Chin. They're going to give it to him. His feet look in. They've got to give it to him. He caught yeah, the ball. Do. What? Now the hands go up. A slight delay, but the hands are up. Well, nobody touched him. All he, <laughs> nobody ever made the play on him. All he had to do was kind of roll over, but nobody made the sign because they felt yeah, the ball was on the one yard line, Donnie. Finally, he just kind of sauntered in. Let's go back. We mentioned Plunkett's been throwing the ball and firing it. Now, this ball is fired. You have to do it when you're in traffic. Chandler catches it. His feet are in. The rule stipulates that the ball has to be in. His feet were in, and the ball wasn't. He finally does amble over. They've got six points. Fisher right there waiting for him to ease on over <laughs> yeah. the line. With Chandler did so the Raiders now move out in front 16 to 7 and those San Diego Chargers are throwing things to their TV. Here's the extra point up and good by Chris Barr. So with 40 seconds left to play in the first half, the Raiders move out in front by a commanding 10 point margin 17 to 7. We've seen a lot of turnovers, a lot of big plays in this game with every reason to expect more. And the Broncos are going to be pitching right down to the final gun trying to knock out the Oakland Raiders. When you talk about a man beating another man one on one a great receiver should always beat a great defensive back if he's in that situation it was a perfect illustration Chandler would made that touchdown on Louis Wright MVP in the Rose Bowl Southern California two time captain of Southern California and he's an attorney and he's an involved guy I think that means a lot to a football team and I think they've, they've acquired four or five involved people Cedric Hardman Bob Chandler uh, these guys they come with the group They'll take them all at Oakland if they can play football. <laughs> They've got a ton of them. A few pirates in there, but they all can play. And here's the kickoff now into the end zone, and Brunson thinks about it and says no. So of course, the clock does not start in the last two minutes until the ball is touched in play, and 40 seconds remain with which the Denver Broncos can work. Well, Matt Robinson, excuse me, Jack. Oh, that's all right. Ready to pitch. Here it is. Preston gets it ahead for eight yards. Box down to 33 seconds of running. Nelson really wants to go. Go ahead and throw it, Matt, but get it down the field a little farther. All 17 Oakland points have been the direct result of Denver turnovers. Swings it out of the backfield. Goes to pick John Keyworth across the 30, looking for the sideline, hoping for help from the 12th man. He didn't find it. 14 seconds. Mike Davis knocked him down. Inbounds, and the clock is down to 14 in the... Broncos now stop it. Well, they're trying to get some sort of a miracle play that can get them into field goal position. They've got, I'd say, a good 45 yards to go to put Steinford in position to kick a field goal, but maybe he will. Jim Plunkett, of course, was a great Rose Bowl player in January of 71. He quartered back an upset of Stanford over Ohio State. So, too, possibly is Oklahoma, the national championship, quite possibly on the line. On December 26th, the lead off all the Bulls and NBC at the Fiesta Bowl, Penn State and Ohio State. A good one from Tempe, Arizona. Now it's first and ten with not much time. Twelve seconds left, swing pass goes to Keyworth. He holds on, takes on Nelson, goes down to the 38. And the clock is down to five seconds, and the Broncos call another timeout. If I, if I were them, I think I'd file this half. Let's get in, regroup, see if we can't get something started the next half, because the only thing that's happened to them in three situations when they've had the ball right about there is they've turned it over. If they did that, now there wouldn't be time for Oakland to kick a field goal. But they bet. Do you think the mile-high altitude has much effect on a visiting team? I think if you're here a day or two, you can get acclimated to it, but I do know that it has an effect on the ball. The ball will travel farther up here. Even though it's a couple yards, that's a big difference if you're trying to catch it. Hooker's not it. You bet. Steinford's not doing too poorly up here. Robinson stands in. A home run ball to win the half. Steve Watson is going for the ball. Burgess Owens almost had his second. See me. Bump me, pal. I lost my second of the day. So the first half ends and the Oakland Raiders are out in front 17 to 7 capitalizing on three Denver turnovers turning them all into points. We're right now ready for the kickoff and here's how they look. You know Don the stats really aren't that one sided. We see the Bronx uh, have a, a few more yards passing. They've had a few turnovers that have really left things rather uh, in the dark for them. I think that's the indicator as to why it's 17 to 7. The ball game has been played on very even terms. And I think Denver's showing a little more offense than they have in the past few weeks. Right now, Steinford is ready to kick off for the Denver Broncos. Back deep for the Oakland Raiders. Ira Matthews is way back. And here's the kick spinning down. 
And it comes down to Arthur Whittington back there with him. And now, turn, here's a penalty marker down. The ball is taken all the way down the field by Keith Moody and gets it across midfield down inside the 35-yard line. Run out of the 32, but it's going to all come back as there's two clip penalties down against the Oakland Raiders. Keith Moody, a recent acquisition, cut by the Buffalo Bills, coming to Oakland. And there's the clip signal, so the Raiders with a great return bring it back. That's an interesting point, John, because the way it'll break down if San Diego and Oakland should fi fi finish with identical records, conceivably they could both end it up at 11 and 4, or 10 and, uh, 10 and uh, 11 and 5, it would be the point differential, the things that they did in the division and in the First conference. Clipping number 88, receiving team. First off. Don, you know, so often you'll see a, a clip on a kickoff that really isn't, doesn't have much to do with the play. That one cleared, cleared the way for Moody to make his long gain. It would have been the biggest gain he's made since being in Oakland. However, it all went for North. So the Raiders, after the big return by Moody, now start out in a hole. They're at their 10-yard line, first and 10. Blunkett's a quarterback. Cliff Branch goes out wide right. There are two tight ends in the game, but they're going to try to power the ball out, get some room to operate. They go to Van Egan. There's across the 10 to the 13-yard line. Early in the ball game, we showed Matt Millen at middle linebacker and what respect the Broncos had for him offensively. They were getting people on him. We haven't seen much of Randy Gratishar. He's got to be one of the, if not the, premier middle linebackers in this game. You can see the respect that Oakland has for him. They are not going to let him cruise along the line of scrimmage and pick the hole that they're trying to run in. They're going to get somebody on him. They've kept him off the line of scrimmage all day long. Now Branch, who was playing about seven yards out in the last play, comes out all the way to the near sideline, out the lower portion of your screen. On second down and seven, they go back to the run. There's not much there in the heart of the Denver defense. Van Egan's ahead across the 15-yard line to the 17. Trying to bring out third down and about three as we're early in the third quarter with the Raiders in the lead, 17-7. They took an early lead in the game on a 58-yard interception and return by Burgess Owens. There is Al Davis. I think he's got enough problems going on all at one time. Tell you, he finds a way to get out of them. Says he's thinking football only, getting this Raider team in the playoffs. Here's a fake and a handoff, and Raider runs with the ball. And Denver's stacking up the run now on a third and short carry. Oakland didn't get there, so the Raiders will have to punt the ball to Denver. Mike Harden dropping back deep as an up back. Rick Upchurch is the deep receiver for the Oakland Raiders. 13-13 to play in the third quarter as Ray Guy comes out in the field from Southern Mississippi. One of the few punters ever drafted in the first round of the National Football League. The Major League Baseball prospect could have played shortstop, they said, in the Major League. And he can also play wide receiver if ever need be. And he's punting the ball to a man that if he happens to get it cleanly, there are very few special teams that can catch him. That is number 80 on the Broncos, Rick Upchurch. Guy on low, way downfield. Drifting back to the 23-yard line is Upchurch. He's got some room. Then the Raiders close the wall. Knockdowns made at the 33-yard line. But Ray Guy hit it 59 yards in the line of scrimmage. He was back 15 when he delivered the ball. So at 12.35, left to play in the third quarter. The Broncos go on offense for the first time in the second half. A lot of walking wounded for the Denver Broncos here at Mile High today. Matt Robinson's out for the second half with a concussion. This is... Rick Upchurch, who went out in the punt return. And remember, Don, he is the number punt, one punt returner in the history of this game. In only five years, he broke Emlyn Tunnell's record that took 14 years to build. Three things are necessary. A good defense, great ability, and fortunate to stay healthy. And it looks as if he's going to be out for the rest of the afternoon. We couldn't see what happened. When a lot of people get a hold, something's got to go. It's an injury to Rick's right arm. Jim Jensen, the runner, won't be back. Matt Robinson out of the game. Greg Morton starting the second half goes right to Riley Odom's a tight end. He's a full load when he gets the head of steam going, and he's out to the 50. A 16-yard gain on the play and a first down for the Broncos. Out to midfield, Burgess Owens. The Raiders' free safety made the knockdown. Both teams have been effective on first downs with play action passes to their tight end and their backs. Now, Craig Morton's been had an opportunity to observe throughout the first half. He's back in the ball game because Matt Robinson has a concussion. As we're looking at Rick Upchurch, that stick him on his hand, but the pain is in his arm. 
over four arms. So now it is first and ten for the Broncos. Morton play fake and looks long, swings it out. Ball is caught by the veteran Haven Moses. It's another Bronco first down. Before he is unceremoniously pounded to the turf, the official comes <laughs> in and blows the whistle. 13 yard gain, though. By a 13 year veteran, I think he probably runs patterns about as well as anybody in the game, Baron. When you see a receiver that can keep going year after year after year and play with the effect that he's played all those years when Denver wasn't doing so well, he was in Buffalo for six or seven years early, was effective there, came out to Denver, and has had a good year every year he's been here. He really has. He's been a great player. Just being around as long as he has. Out of San Diego State, a former number one draft choice of the Bills, a big contributor in the Broncos' success, the Super Bowl year when they went to the Super Bowl. Now the throw to the end zone, Steve Watson. A lanky, wide, wide receiver who came in as a free agent from Temple. They say he can catch anything if it's near him. He almost had that one. We're told that Rick Upchurch, John, has an injury to his forearm and to his shoulder. Unlikely that he will be back. Now Moses comes in motion back towards the line on second down and ten. The throw goes to Preston. Let's see if we get a call. Yep, they ruled that Miller was right on time in his coverage. Well, I'm sure they're yelling, and if I was at home and could get the, the adrenaline of the fans moving, I'd be yelling too, because they've got to do something to pump this game up from an offensive standpoint. But Millen made a perfect play, and I think that ball was already past Preston when Millen made contact. We'll take a look. Okay, he's trying to get to Preston. The ball is passed. Now Millen hits him. That's a good call. A good call it is, so it brings up third down and ten as the ball is down to the 37-yard line of Oakland. Raiders are in the lead. 17-7. 10-58 to play in the third quarter. Craig Morton at quarterback. The Broncos with the ball. Third down and ten. Here it comes. Penalty markers go down, and the play is nullified on the whistle. The penalty before the snap. The wily old codger pulled him offside. Instead of going on one. start on the center. Oh, I'm wrong. <laughs> That's why they were offside. Ryan might be wily. He's not too much of a codger, only in his fourth year. He's had a big season. <laughs> that that one, number seven, is a bit, he is a bit wily. But number 64, Bill Bryan, having a fine year. Cost him five. Morton's been at the game a long time. Nine and a half seasons with Dallas and in New York for three and a half. Now in his 16th year in pro football. Out of Cal at Berkeley, a number one draft choice of the Dallas Cowboys. He came off off a 260-yard game last week throwing the ball. Completed 20 against Kansas City. Oh. But enough. Here's the ball slapped up in the air. And Matuzak took a look at it. And that, they, ought to give him a, they ought to give him a big credit for that play because Watson was coming right underneath the flow. There was nobody in his area. Morton was going to him, and it would have been a big gainer. Big John goes off. All right, we'll take a look. He's playing the slot. Steve Watson. Comes out, lets his receivers go downfield, cuts underneath. There is nobody in the area. The ball got blocked. As a result, nothing. Now, Tuzak who slapped it down, he is one of the two free agents that Oakland has acquired who originally were the number one picks in the entire NFL draft. Jim Plunkett's the other. Back in 73, Matuzak went to Houston as the very first player pick. Prestridge punts the ball into the end zone with 10.44 left to play in the third quarter. It comes out to the 20. And the Raiders looking to score as many points as they can because of the tiebreaker formula and their competition with San Diego going offense again. Back at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Don Cricky with John Brody. What do you think, Coach? I think Oakland better start humming because Denver has been down there knocking at the door. They haven't been able to turn it into points. Oakland's got two things to do. One, they've got to offensively start exploding because it won't do them any good to play Pittsburgh or Houston in the playoff if their offense isn't in gear. That's right. The offense has not been in gear. Denver's defense has had a lot to do with that. The 17 points that the Raiders had on the board, a direct result of three. Denver turnovers and Oakland's defense had a lot to do with that. People around the Raider organization say this might be the best any Raider defense has played ever in the recent weeks. And you can't win without one, but you have to have some offense. And uh, in the first half, they showed me that it looked like they were starting to throw the ball around the infield a little bit. I'd like to see it in this half. As we were mentioning earlier, there was talk that Al Davis sent his offense to L.A. early. 
But Plunkett's going to try to go deep before long. He wants as much as he can get. Here's a handoff to Van Egan, and he gets the ball across the 20, out close to the 23-yard line. I found him wrapped around my shoulders on several occasions. It wasn't Larry Wilson who started the safety blitz. It was Charlie Sunder. Right now, we have Jim Plunkett taking a deep drop on third down and six. Throws, makes the connection to Van Egan. Nice play by Mark. It really was. He's made a lot of them over the years. Van Egan in the seventh year from Colgate. The number two all-time Oakland rusher, so dependable, has 651 yards rushing coming into this game today. Been slowed a little bit by a leg muscle pull. Had some thousand-yard seasons for the Raiders. He's always, as you mentioned, dependable. Reliable, catches the ball, and he blocks. Larry Brunson is back as a single return man now, replacing Rick Upchurch, who is shaken up as Ray Guy is ready to punt for the second time in the second half. We have 9.18 to play in the third quarter. Guy's last little number was 59 yards. Brunson throwing a lot of respect. He's back inside the 25 yard line. Big rush. Raiders almost got it. Did they get Ray Guy? No flag. Brunson got it. Living dangerously, he swept right under. A 46-yard punt, no return. With John Brody, Don Pricky back at Mile High Stadium in Denver with the Raiders, looking to keep in a first-place tie with San Diego in the AFC West, the leading 17-7. Red Miller's offense, able to put up one touchdown in a sustained drive. Here is a good throw. Great throw. Pattern to Steve Watson, 6'4", 195, a former basketball player who stretches out and gets it. I haven't had a chance to see Steve Watson catch the ball that often, but he's a kid that they know has 4'4", 4 4'5", 4 4 4 speed. I'm impressed with the way he gets on the ball, keeps his attention on it, and comes down with it. That ball that he didn't come up with in the end zone was an excellent effort, and this was a great catch. It was an excellent catch. It's a first down now for the Broncos. The ball is out to their 41-yard line. Horton started the game, gave way in the first quarter to Matt Robinson. He was shaken up. Horton back in to start the second half, and here's a test to walk to Preston, and penalty markers go down all over as Preston is taken down the 49-yard line. Well, I think what you saw was a little defensive holding, if you want an opinion, because just as the ball was thrown, the flags were thrown, and the wide receivers were very close to the defensive backs. Here's the call. Dick Jorgensen. Linebacker Larry Evans getting attended to on the sideline. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know whether he wears contacts or what. He may have something in his eye, but uh, you need them both out there. Because uh, they're coming at you from all angles when you're a linebacker. Multiple fouls. Holding number 35. Defense. Decline. Holding number 37. Defense, decline, second down. That's, we were right. It did look like both corners. You know, it's a good quarterback that can kind of feel their receivers held up, that can put the ball in the air at the same time. And, and Craig does it a lot more than some others might. There are a lot of qualities that Craig employs into that group that go unnoticed. Not by the players, but by the fan. He's not very mobile, but I'll tell you what, if you're an offensive lineman, they like to know where you're going to be. And he's going to be in the same spot every time he goes back. Morton's pretty predictable that way. He's not about to run unless something real dire happens. It's second down and two. Look at this. Nice <laughs> stands in. He throws. Man is there. Haven Moses has another one. He's down to the 27-yard line for a first down. Morton plays Bacon. Bacon the roll, then stands in and delivers a strike to Haven Moses at the 27. When you there are strikes, and then there are perfect pitches. That baby just caught the corner of the plate. Threw it right into a congestion of people. There were two on either side, one behind. Hit Moses right where it had to be thrown for a big game. Craig's playing pretty well. I mean, he played good to start off the ball game, and he's come on strong in the second half. He's playing real well. Haven Moses is, too. He's caught four now for 80 yards. That one was for 24. On a first down carry, Preston tries to get some yardage. Dave Preston Written a whole lot there, but he did take the ball from the 32 down to the 30. Raiders across their defensive front with John Matuzak, Reggie Kinlaw, and Dave Browning. 
Ken Hendricks, Matt Millen, Bob Nelson, Rod Martin back the line. Lester Hayes and Dwayne Osteen at the corners. Mike Davis and Burgess Owens are the safety. Martin has a problem. Cedric Hardman, I think. No, it's a safety blitz by Davis. Mike Davis, the strong safety came. And he came fast, Bob. When you come untouched as a safety and you get off on the ball, the quarterback has very little chance. Another one of the many players in the NFL from Colorado. I think they're about third in the overall list. 42 from Oklahoma, 37 from Southern California, about 31 from Colorado. Mike was a number two draft choice of the Raiders. From nearby Boulder, 1977. Big, strong, strong safety, 6'3", 210. Right now, it's third down and 12 for Denver. So Greg Morton drops right back. Here comes the big rush. Stands in. He throws. Too much on it. Moses turned out, then turned into the end zone. I'll tell you, that Lester Hayes plays both sides of the field. They've got him on Moses wherever he goes. And because they do, he has to play left corner and right corner, depending on where Moses goes. Most of the time, you can move him around, and, you know, you can pick on the defensive back you like. But this time, he's got to take Lester Hayes, and it's a tough chore. Luke Crestridge will hold for Fred Steinfort. 46-yard field goal attempt. I think this is a new holder, too, because I think Matt Robinson is yeah. the normal holder. Here is the field goal. It hit the upright and bounced back. From 46 yards out, it had the power behind it to be good from 60, but it hit the upright, no good. How many balls have you seen hit the uprights this year? You've got to give them 20 tries. They can't do it, and they keep hitting it every trip. It's been a lot. Right now, with 6.22 left to play in the third quarter, the Raiders hold to their 10-point lead. 17-7, Dr. Love and the Psychedelic Rangers are here. I tell you, he qualifies. <laughs> 6.22 to go in the third quarter. Right now, he paused briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. This is KMTV Omaha. Jim Plunkett and his numbers on the day. The numbers don't really indicate he's had some opportunities. They've had the ball in bad field position in the third quarter. They've got to move it right now. They've been fortunate not to have any points scored against them in the second half, and it won't hold up if their offense doesn't move. Plunkett takes a deep drop. Here comes the rush. There's a blitz, but he gets it away to Van Egan. It takes the first shot put on him by Aaron Kyle. Goes down at the 32-yard line, a gain of only four yards. It'll be second down in a long six. Tuesday night. At 8 p.m. on NBC, the AP All-America team with some of the great ones, like the rookie from Georgia, Herschel Walker, and the Heisman Trophy winner from South Carolina, George Rogers. Here's a swing pass. Goes out to Arthur Whittington. He's taken down to the 37-yard line by Rob Neer. Bring up third down and about two now for Oakland. This Arthur, you got to admire him. He's so small. That helps you catch a football. Yeah, so well, I, I don't really know whether it helps you or it doesn't, but I know that Arthur Whittington plays an awful lot bigger yes, than his not. weight. You mentioned he's about, I mean, they say he's not even 175 pounds, okay? But he's a running back that runs inside as effectively as he does outside. He's a little injured today, not nearly as badly as Kenny King, and uh, they're trying to put the burden on Mark. Double wing formation. They go to Van Egan. He busts through on a third and two play. Mark Van Egan takes it across the 40. He gets the ball to the 42-yard line. It's a first down for the Raiders. And the third quarter clock winds down to 440 to play. Latimer comes out. And again on the short yardage play. Denver on defense as Chavis at left end. Middle guard is big Reuben Carter. Bryson Manor the right end. The backers, Nairn, Evans, Gratishaw, and Jackson. Your message, John, we haven't talked Gratishaw's numbers no, but, and they haven't stayed. They haven't thrown the ball in this area. They go back to the run. Do the Raiders on first down. Take it from their 42-yard line across the 45 and out to the 48. When you've got a man that plays and is as fast as Randy Gratishaw, you're a lot better going right at him than you are running away from him. They took a shot right at him that time, picked up about six. Van Egan's now run with the ball nine times in the game for 40 yards. Gratishar, Woody Hayes called the best, best we ever had at Ohio State. No doubt about how good he is, Don, but you know a great one can get frustrated if he hasn't been in the action as much as he'd like. Arthur Whittington turns the corner. Steps out of bounds, but Whittington on a second down and three play got ahead for a first down for Oakland. Bill Thompson ran him out. 
All right. You know, remember when the Bronx started moving the ball early in the ball game? They ran the ball very effectively for three first downs in the first quarter. That really stands for their 48 yards. Since that time, Jim Jensen has gone down, Bob Lytle has gone down, and they really don't have the people that can pick up the yardage on the ground, and they've, as a result, had to go upstairs, and they haven't been too effective. They only came in with four healthy backs. They've got two now. <laughs> Here's Whittington again in the first down. Good play. There we have it. Inside linebacker shot the gap, made a tackle 56 from Mississippi College. And a 6'6", 280. You know, Don, when you take a look at, like, a, like a Boyd and a Rulon Jones and a Bishop, uh, these fellas are young players. Red Miller kind of inserts them in without anyone noticing, and they never get too old. He does have a lot of young people in his mind. He's looking for more speed at the skill positions in the backfield. Play football! Raiders hold on. Mark Shell got there. Boy, Boy, and it's a good thing he was alert. Not many tackles are standing around checking the play out to see when the ball goes free because he was not in an area where the play was designated to be. Here he is. He's blocking down. He does his job, and he does it fine. Somehow he catches a glimpse of the ball, and as it pops out, that's about 300 X amount of pounds sliding over to pick it up. Raiders and the Broncos have had so many great games. One of the greatest was on January 1st, 1978. American Conference Championship game here at Mile High Stadium when Denver won 2017 and out of the Super Bowl. Now it is third down and 12. The Raiders, Jim Plunkett. Here's oh. the throw, it's intercepted. Picked off and a lateral is made. Ball was intercepted by Rob Nair, then he lateraled it back and they're not done yet. One more lateral, they'll be inside their 20. <laughs> Back inside the 35-yard line. <laughs> I tell you, you could, the fans feel it. Everybody gets a feel of it. To make a fine play, the shell recovers. Put him in a third down and 12 situation. All the fans are getting a bit active. This was a poorly thrown ball. He had a little pressure. He tries to make a great play. As a result, makes a poor one. One. One little lateral deserves another little lateral. He's trying to get to Bob Chandler. He's on Louis Wright. Chandler cuts underneath. But Nairn is standing right there to pick the ball up. So the Raider drive is stopped. With 156 to play in the third quarter. The Broncos get it back. They'll have it first and 10 at their 33 when we come back. Oakland continues to hold a 10-point lead, 17-7. So the turnover, the interception, and now the ball is back in the hands of the Broncos at their 33-yard line, first and 10. 156 to play in the third quarter. Morton stands in, brings it out on the screen, goes to a fullback, John Keyworth over the 40, over the 45, and over the 50, and Keyworth is down to the 45-yard line of Oakland. A 22-yard gain as the Broncos had it set up. You know, that play would have gone for about six yards, had not the wide receivers done their job. They took the, they took both of the defensive backs down the field, and when Keyword did come up with the ball, perfect execution from the offensive line, allowing Keyword to get down the field. But look at Steve Watson. He did not let Osteen get up and pursue the play. Okay, he can see the, he can see the screen in a second, but they're giving him plenty of room. He comes up, can't get there. Morton on first down. Takes a look, they give him time. You ain't kidding. Now he throws. Peyton Moses is out there and has the ball down to the 11-yard line. But there's a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Great pass catch combination again, Morton to Haven Moses. But a penalty marker down. Well, if his offensive line gives him that much time, he'll be playing when he's 55. And it's going to go against the Raiders, so the play goes again at 32 Wilson, yards. Number 55, defense, who fly. That's why he needed the time, Don. We took a look at, at Osteen, number 35, a little earlier in the one play earlier. He played way off. This time he's put man-to-man -man on, on Haven Moses. The time necessitates him to hold him, because if he doesn't, he'd have been free. Hey, this Haven Moses. Right. That penalty wasn't on him. He gets better as he gets older. He had his most productive season last year, his 12th in the league, when he caught 54 balls for almost 1,000 yards. 
He's the second all-time leading pass receiver to Harold Jackson in New England. And today, he's caught four for a 20 yard. Touchdown, Oakland. Riley Odom's in the end zone. I might get Riley to get up to 280 pounds if he plays as well as he's playing today. He's been able to get off the line of scrimmage, get into his pattern, break free of the strong safeties, and they've been putting the ball where it has to be thrown. He's having an outstanding day. He really is. They've been down at him, and so is Morton. His prime receiver has been Haven Moses, who's caught five for 113 yards, and then on the payoff end of the touchdown throw, Riley Odom. So it's a game again. Seventeen thirteen game. Now you'll remember that the regular holder, Matt Robinson, went out in the first half with a concussion. Westbrook is holding and doing it well as Steinfurt delivers the point after. So we got a good one going at mile high at 17-14 Oakland. The Broncos go 66 yards in three plays, and it took them 28 seconds. And old Curley brought him right down there. Number seven, Craig Morton, 37 years old. Stands in there, waits as long as he can possibly wait to allow Oldham's to run his pattern, who runs a fine one, puts the ball where it has to be thrown. This baby's getting closer and closer. Broncos all revved up now, that defensive unit, huddling around the coaches on the sideline. As Riley Odoms, having a big day, he hadn't had a whole lot of them recently. But they all get set when the Raiders come to town. You've got to get him the ball, you know, Don. You've got to get him the ball. If you're not throwing the ball in the direction of the tight end, it's pretty hard for him to catch it. They just threw it in his direction. It was a six points. And now the throwing on the day for Craig Morton, 11 of 17 for 192 yards. And the touchdown. Custom scored in a run the first touchdown, you remember, in the first quarter for Denver. Right. Not too bad uh, when you consider he's only played just a little over a quarter. Yeah. Well, we mentioned they pulled him if he joined us late. They Craig Morton started, but they wanted to look at Matt Robinson, who did well when he was in there, but went out with a concussion. So Craig Morton went back in. Ira Matthews takes the ball, and he busts through and comes across the 30 and out to the 33-yard line. Then there's a fumble and a free ball. Eric Ramsey got the ball for Oakland. Now let's switch back to New York to NFL 80 and Bryant Gumbel. Brian at mile high, the Rocky Mountain Thunder has started up again. The feet thundering in the stands. Over 75,000 as it sold out again. They shake the whole city. Boy, I'll tell you, you can feel it shake. And now the handoff goes to Van Egan on first and ten. He takes it across the 40 to the 41. Going to be second down at six. He gets back in the game and hopefully he doesn't do something offensively, right? They haven't done anything in the whole third quarter. And I mean, they haven't been out. Out of the 50. Second down and six now for the Raiders. Monkey quarterback Plant Branch is white. There's handoff right up the middle of the 45. Yeah. Branch and Chandler to either flank. They go right up the middle at them. And the run is to the 45 yard line. So it's going to bring up third and about three now. Everybody Raiders yeah. with that big interior blocking wall of Art Shell, Gene Upshaw, Dave Dalby, Mickey Marvin, and Henry Lawrence. Hey, when you get in a huddle in this sort of situation, very seldom do you have an offensive line and say, hey, run it over me. This is a very critical play right now to keep their drive alive. If I had a guy that might be doing some talking, I would predict Upshaw and might say, hey, let's go. It's my turn. Well, let's see. He, of course, is the left guard. But before they can get the playoff, the clock runs out in the third quarter. At the end of the third quarter, the score is the Oakland Raiders 17, the Denver Broncos 14, and we'll be right back. After We're ready to start the fourth quarter at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Don Crickey with John Brody. The Oakland Raiders holding to a 17-14 lead in a game that they must win. They remain in a first-place tie with San Diego in the AFC West. The Chargers, as you know, won yesterday over Seattle 21-14. They stand 10-5 on the year. The Raiders had a 17-7 lead in this game. Then Oakland. Well, the passing of Greg Morton tightened it up, and now Plunkett has a problem setting up, and he stands in, lets it go, and Ramsey has the ball inside the 40-yard line of Denver. We apologize to our audience due to a technical difficulty. We've lost picture. It's been going in and out on the play. 
Jim Plunkett dropped straight back, stood in, threw a strike right over the middle of tight end Derek Ramsey. The game was down to the 38-yard line of Denver. And it's a shame they couldn't see a picture because that play was as well executed as any play they've called all day. Plunkett just hung in there and hung in there and waited for Ramsey to get open and threw it right where he had to. Now the Raiders come out of the huddle they have. Cliff Branch, wide left. Bob Chandler, wide right. First and 10, 38-yard line of Denver again. A straight drop by Plunkett. Home run ball to the end zone. Chandler in the near corner catches it for a touchdown. Jim Plunkett straight drop back. Bob Chandler fly pattern down the near sideline. Goes into the right corner of the end zone. Goes up in the air. Louis Wright against him. And Bob Chandler comes down with the football. And the Raiders have a 23-14 lead. And Don, what he did was he beat Louis Wright to the ball. They were running stride for stride. Plunkett threw it exactly where it had to be thrown in order to give Chandler the best opportunity to get to the ball. We'll, you can take a look at it, but Plunk standing in there getting good, good pass protection right now. Hanging in there, puts the ball up at the right time. Chandler is well covered by right. It doesn't show in your picture, but he cuts underneath him and takes it away from him. So Bob Chandler making some big receptions. Gives Oakland a 23-14 lead. Looking again now to extend it to 10. With Bob. That's the point after with Chandler holding. So with 14-12 left to play in the game, the Raiders are back on top by 10. It's 24-14. The Raiders are back on top by 10, 24-14 on a 37-yard touchdown throw, which we'll watch again in a moment. Chris Barr kicks off now for Oakland. Into the end zone it goes, and Brunson's going to bring it up. He says he looks for a magic door to slide through. It ain't there. Brunson goes down at the 13-yard line, and there the Broncos will go on offense first and 10. We apologize for a loss of picture when one of the big plays occurred, but we'll watch it again now. Jim Plunkett with a deep drop, and he just lets her fly, and Chandler's there. And I mean, he's hanging in there then. He's getting good pass protection. The ball's got a lot of trajectory on it, which gives Chandler a chance to get underneath Louie Wright, grab the thing for a touchdown, and how many times have you seen Chandler make great catches in critical situations? Well, we've seen him in the end zone twice today. Two touchdown receptions for Bob Chandler. Greg Morton running the Denver offense as Haven Rose's in motion. Hands in, throws. Tight end gets it, but doesn't get much. Riley Owens caught the ball and was knocked back from the 14-yard line. Got a lot of attention, but they couldn't bring him down. He's a big guy, Riley Owens. One of the top players drafted when he came out of the University of Houston nine seasons ago. Jim Plunkett with two touchdown connections with Bob Chandler. Raiders back on top now, 24-14. After their lead was challenged, Morton threw for the touchdown to Riley Odoms. Second down and seven for the Denver Broncos. Morton setting up, takes a look, pumps bacon, delivers to Riley Odoms again. Mike Davis grabs the shirt, pulls out. Hey, he's 255, but he's running some fine patterns. This is a ball that, that a quarterback can see very easily. You get a guy like Odoms who's running down, he's turning, uh, turned to his right, now he plants, he sees the side that Morton's throwing the ball, gives him a good target to hit, comes up with a reception and picks up a first down. A 15-yard gain on the play, gets it out to the 29-yard line. Game clock with 12.47 left to play. Two wide receivers come to the left. Rob Lytle back in the game. Playing with an actually ankle that was so bad they had an x-ray at the first half, you remember, but he's back. Bob Nelson knocks him down. Back to live action at Denver. Second down and six for Morton and the Broncos. Pass goes down on the flank. Going for it. Dave Preston. It'll be third down and six now for the Broncos at their 33-yard line. And I'll bet Morton isn't third too down. pleased with himself because that's one of the rare opportunities where you get the Raiders in a good situation. They had Osteen one-on-one -on -one with Steve Watson, who cut underneath him, had the whole field to work with. And Morton had already committed himself to going wide. Greg Morton gets set to go again now with third down and six. Here comes the rush. Stands in. There's a man open. It's the same guy, number 88. He's getting the ball right between those eights. Very regularly, again for a first down to the 45-yard line. Riley Odoms. <laughs> I'll tell you why he's getting it right to, to the letter, 
because he's getting excellent pass protection. You take a look at these fellas. I mean, he's got enough time to allow Odoms to get down the field, cut across the middle. He, he sees them easily, and it's not much trouble to pick him off. Greg Morton in his 16th year, an All-American at Cal at Berkeley, where he played under the current coach of Kansas City, Marv Levy. <laughs> Number one draft choice of the Cowboys way back in 65. And now he has the Broncos at their 45. First down and 10. Let the rip. Hands there. He got it. Watson. And a penalty marker comes in after the play and he's not on Watson. Steve Watson, the free agent from Temple, we're talking about his ability to get the ball diving. That's the second one he's done like that. We mentioned down that Osteen had Watson on the previous play all over the field. Sometimes a good receiver will say, hey, it looks to me like I've been one-on-one -on -one all day long. He was again. Interference number 37. Defense. Decline, first down. Let's watch Watson again. He was a college long jumper. Well, okay, if the ball had been laid up a little bit, which you don't know the man's going to fall down, he could have taken it in stride and run it in. As it was, it's a 41-yard game. Credit Watson again. One fill in the hat, you should say. You got it. 11-14 to play. Raiders lead the game 24-14. Here's another penalty not to go up. We have a delay. Remember this, the tight end can move as long as he doesn't draw them off. And now uh, if they if they judge in the official's judgment that he drew them offside against Oakland. That's right. He can move and they if they reacted a little late. When they did so, in the official's judgment, he didn't draw them off. They were just trying to pick up an extra five. We could be heading for one of those storied Oakland Denver finishes. Encroachment, defense, still first down. We have a chance to see Odom. Watch this. He kind of false starts, but there's no movement. Martin hasn't moved now. So in the official's judgment, I think it's correct. They gave five to the Bronx. So now it's first and five. Right up the middle and out into the end zone. Dave Preston, his second touchdown of the day. As the Bronco forward wall smashes open Oakland's defense. And again, the Broncos are back in the game with 11 8 to play. And when they get down by that goal line, there are certain, there are certain players that just have a knack of finding holes when it looks like there aren't any. One of them is Dave Preston. You notice he's always inserted in the ball game when they get down inside the 20-yard line. He's come up with a lot of touchdowns for him, and that was a big one. He's another of those free agents who just do it with guile, cunning. He's got no speed, none to speak of. Was drafted late by New England and Cup signed here as a free agent. Was a great all-around back in college at Bowling Green. And now for a 10-yard touchdown run by Dave Preston. The extra point is good. And it's a 24-21 game. Oakland's lead back down to three. With John Brody, this is Don Cricky back at Mile High Stadium. The Broncos looking great again, John. They go back and forth. Yeah, and I think that sometimes you can you can say, hey, why don't they play like this every week? And we'll get back to it after the kick. The kick is taken by Keith Moody across the 10 and the 15 and the 20. He's out to the 22-yard line with a first and 10 for Oakland. You know, right now, you see Denver playing exceptionally fine offensive football. And that man, number seven, Craig Morton, who has carried Denver when they've been most successful, is the guy that's doing it. He's done it over the years. Their basic structure is conservative. Red Miller's a man who likes to keep the offense on the ground, take very few chances, and he's been effective doing it because he's played great defense. So you'll see when they need it, Craig will come on and do well on occasion. But their offensive structure doesn't lend itself to a lot of high-scoring games. It just isn't the way they see fit to play football. When they do, I think they're more effective. Well, they've opened it up when they had to, and they've fallen considerably behind, and now they're right back in, and it's 24 to 21. On a first down play, the Raiders go to the run. Plunkett, their quarterback, has hit on 11 of 19 throws today for 155 yards and the two touchdowns to Chandler. You know what we're seeing? We're seeing two offenses that are both thought to be mediocre take it to two deep defenses that are thought to be outstanding. And they've been doing it in the last 15 minutes of play, and what a lot of people thought it would be a 10 to 7 whole homer. It may turn out to be one of those 38-35 jobs. The old Southwest Conference keep it in the air. Here's the handoff going to Mark Van Egan again after he gained eight on the first carry. He's 
drives now close to a first down across the 30. And to get to the 32. The middle guard needs a big one. 68, Reuben Carter from Miami of Florida made the knockdown along with outside linebacker Rob Nairn. Got some big guys in that defensive front of Denver. A lot of backup people. We haven't seen too much of Rulon Jones in the second half, but we saw him sack the quarterback twice in the first. And you know something, Don, when, when you're on offense and you see your defense getting beat, you know you've got to score the football. They know right now Oakland knows three points is not enough for them to sit and protect. They've got to go out and attack because, I mean, their opportunity to get into that postseason uh, picture depends on how well they do in the next 10 minutes. They get a good group going here at Mile High. Tom Flores, Raider coach, an original Raider, and onto the Buffalo Bills in the LaMonica trade and back to Oakland. Now as the head coach of the Raiders. Well, you can tell they're back in the East Coast rooting for one team or another. I think Pittsburgh's rooting for Oakland and New England's rooting for Denver. You know who San Diego's rooting for. You got that straight. San Diego with a half game lead right now over Oakland, depending on the outcome of this game. On a third down and foot carry. Over the top, the Raiders go with Van Egan. They get the first down. He's been doing it for years. Possibility of OT is not remote here because Steinfort can hit 55 yards out. He gets a shot at it for Denver. Going wide is Arthur Whittington with a serious problem. Look at this play. Arthur is fired and falling back, and he's all the way back inside the 25-yard line. And Aaron Kyle can run. Aaron Kyle can from the right corner. He's the one that chased Arthur all the way back for an 11-yard loss. We've seen a few, a few great backs over the years change directions, get lucky, catch people against the flow, turn it into a big gainer. And I don't blame Whittington in that situation for trying to make something out of nothing. But Aaron Kyle absolutely exploded across that line of scrimmage when he changed direction and kept it to a big loss. We call in the second quarter. Plunkett and the Raiders had a third and 38. We're working on another one. Right now it's going to be second down and 20. Nobody's got any good second 20 calls either. For some reason, Rulon Jones, John, has not been coming in. The big freshman pass rusher, the big rookie from Utah State. Now the Raiders want to regroup, so they signal for an allotted one of their three second half timeouts. I think the painter of that sign, John, might have had a cocktail between the time he started and finished it. <laughs> I'm not sure he knows who he's for. Go Denver beat the Broncos. 8.36 to go. Broncos within three. 24 to 21. Oakland is in the lead and has the ball, but long, long yard is coming up. I'll tell you, Donnie, if, our, if the picture's shaking a little bit on the reception end, it's because this stadium is rocking. A quick thunder starting up again. Here's Plunkett sending people along. Chandler's going over the middle. Plunkett has a problem, gets it away, and makes the completion to Bob Chandler for a first down. Are you kidding me? It's unbelievable. That's 21 yard gain. That's one of the, one of those beautifully deceptive passes that had Raymond Chester totally befuddled because he thought the ball was coming to him. He couldn't reach it, went over his head, and went to Bob Chandler. Now Plunk goes drops quite a bit back, does come up in the pocket. Looks like he's going to Raymond. There's Chandler right on the money, picks up the first down, keeps their drive alive, quiets down the whole city of Denver. Chandler run a pattern over the middle, saw that Plunkett was in trouble, and sprinted for the far sideline, and Plunkett somehow got the ball to him, coming back at it. Chandler with a 21-yard reception and a first down for the Raiders. Now they go back to the run, looking to run that clock. Van Egan takes it across the Raider, 45-yard line, and gets it out to the 46, and the clock goes down to 7.38 in running. Joe Van Egan's been in the trenches. We mentioned at the start of the second half, Don, that if Oakland were to win the second half by 17 points, they could become the, their division winners. They don't have any chance to do that now. They're struggling for a wild card spot. They're hoping to win the game. You got it. Three-point game, 7.15 to play. Raiders coming out of the huddle at their leisure, using as much of the clock as they can. Second down and seven. Back to the run. Whittington turns up field. Nothing there. As the Broncos sweep it under. Bernie Chavis, number 79, was there, so was the middle guard, Reuben Carter. Putting yourself in a spot. Third down and six, third down and seven. Now it's third down coming up for the Raiders. Third down and seven from their 47-yard line. Bronco defense aligns, takes position. 
Here's Chandler on Louis Wright out here again. He gets it. He's one on one. They're coming. No mark is down. Look, it stands in and they get him. Ruan Jones just came back and gets his third sack of the day. That's a hustle. Well, when you say he got him, he wasn't the only one that got him. They teed up and that at the quarterback. Well, they really timed the play well. If they're going to have somebody come free if you, if you time a blitz as well as they did. But Rulon just kind of walks right on through the offensive left side of the Raiders. That's only Art Shell and Gene Upshaw. They're not too easy to walk through. Rulon Jones, 6'6", 265. Good rookie number down. two draft choice out of Utah right. State. He was the Broncos' first pick in the last draft because their number one choice had gone to New York, part of the Matt Robinson trade. The Jets. Fourth down now, Ray Guy punts a line drive and really drills the ball, hits into the end zone. With 5.44 left to play, a 64-yard punt by Ray Guy gives the ball back to Denver to Bryant Gumbel now in New York. Thank you, Brian. On first down, the Broncos went to the pass. It was incomplete. In fact, very nearly intercepted by Mike Davis. Don, the I, Oakland Raiders. Don, I don't want to mislead anybody that when I said Oakland right now is playing for an opportunity to get in the playoffs as a wild card. Uh, they do have a chance to win the, their division if they win today, and San Diego gets beat next week. But they can't make, they can't win the division all on their own. So now it is second down and 10 for the Denver Broncos. Ball at their 19-yard line. Morton stands in, takes a look, lets a rip. Here's a penalty marker down. The ball is caught again by Haven Moses, his sixth reception of the day. He has almost 150 reception yards. Boy, what a beautiful throw. Man, when you talk about hanging in there, Craig Morton allowed Holding number 35, defense, who's won? Who's won? They're on the move, and if the Raiders ever had to stop momentum and 70,000 cheering fans, this is the time. Craig Morton makes a beautiful play, comes in there and allows Matusak to run by. When we say, hey, stand tall in the pocket, we mean stand still and don't get too deep where those tackles can come from the outside and get you. Statistician Joe Costanza pointing out Moses now has caught six balls for 140 yards for Denver. And the Broncos are moving, trailing by three in the fourth quarter. They go to the run. Rod Lytle, bad ankle and all gets ahead and inside the 50-yard line down to the 44. On a first down carry, Rod Lytle rips off the game. Almost eight yards. More liable to play it conservatively if he's trying to get in the playoffs. I think if it gets down to a fourth and one situation, you're going to see him have a go at it to try and beat the Raiders rather than take a chance in overtime. 5.26 to go in the game. Oakland by three, but Denver driving. Second down and less than a yard. Morton timing pattern, loops it up. Watson going for the ball, but has no chance to dive at that one. We come down to the 16th weekend of the 1980 season next Sunday, next Saturday and Sunday. Plus other regional games all here on NBC Sports. Check your listings for the game and time in your area. Now it's third down. Morton calls his own number seven, puts his head down behind Bryant, and he gets the Denver first down. You know, you're talking about the last game of the season, and we've still got seven teams in the American Football Conference that are within one game of each other. I'd say that's keeping it pretty close, folks. Buffalo's 10 and 5, New England 9 and 6 in the East. Houston and Cleveland, both 10 and 5 in the Central. And who'd have thought New England, Houston, and Pittsburgh are struggling trying to get a playoff berth when the season started? Buffalo came on. They're a prime reason why that's in vogue. But there have been a few other surprises, and Oakland is one of them. They are. They a way a lot of frontline players to build with draft choices, and yet they're a contender for the playoff very much. Morton stands in, gets away somehow. Now he throws and almost into the hands of Mike Davis. Coming back at the ball, he was looking at Riley Odoms, but leading away, didn't have enough on the ball. The Central Division's always fun. <laughs> Survival of the fittest. You know, Cleveland loses. Houston's still got a chance to win their division. If Cleveland's got to win next week, and that's no sense. No. And of course, Cleveland goes to arch-rival Cincinnati next Sunday. Browns beat today in a three fourth quarter touchdown passes by Tommy Kramer of the Vikings as Minnesota wins the center. Here's a throw and a strike. And again, it's Riley Odom. Little defense, and he's down to the 16-yard line. A 25-yard gain and a first down, and the clock is running with 4.40 to play. I 
tell you, this is vintage Craig Morton. Uh, the play prior to this that put him in a position of second and 10 rather than second and 20 is the play when he just found, he knew where his receiver was. He found a way to throw the ball incomplete. Riley Odoms has only caught for 163 yards. Now at 255 pounds, that's a lot of energy just moving up and down the field. Boy, oh, that's a truck when he gets it, he heads into the defense. Now it's first and 10. Ball at the 18 yard line. End off goes. Custom has been in the end zone twice on runs, takes it down inside the 15 yard line of the Raiders. Oh. 17 years. That's He's not given away to Robinson in the first half. He'll have a 400 yard day. <laughs> But right now, the Raiders down by three, 24-21. Have second down and seven coming up at the 15-yard line of Oakland. Morton, deep drop, takes a look, stands in. Now there is the sack. Matt Millen, one of the linebackers, got through and makes a big, big defensive play for the Raiders. Because now, with third down coming up, if Denver does not convert the first down, it's a long field goal attempt. Post spotted at the 22-yard line of Oakland. The game clock is running. Three minutes and 12 seconds, 3.11 left to play. The lights are on at Mile High Stadium. Playing conditions absolutely excellent. Temperature in the 60s. Dry grass field, free football. Morton gets it back, but at the 30. And now it is a pretty good distance. 47, 47. to 48 yards. It's within, it's within Steinford's reach, but it's a whole lot less likely than it was when it was sitting at the 20-yard line. You remember that the first try by Steinfurt, the snap set down this connection. The ball was on its side, and he kicked a ground ball. Then when he got a good hold, he banged one from 46 yards. Remember again, Luke Prestridge is holding the ball. Now, I'm not saying that Luke has never been as good as Matt Robinson, but the fact that he hasn't been doing it has an effect on the kick. 47 yards is not even to be close. It skips into the end zone on the second hop. So that did make a big difference, John. A different holder, Matt Robinson, without a concussion. And the Broncos misfire when they get down close. They had a chance, if not to win the game, certainly to tie it and send it to overtime. Now with 2.36 left to play, the Raiders get it back. And they get it back just inside their 30. So the Raiders come out of the huddle now. Two minutes and 36 seconds away from a possible victory to keep them in a first-place tie with San Diego. They go to the run. And running the ball well and the clock is Mark Van Egan as he's across the 35-yard line out to the 36. You can bet Don there will be nothing fancy in this drive. These guys know if they get out of this ballpark with a victory, they have come away with something that has, has raised the temperature of their uh, of their group. And I don't think they'll do anything but run the ball straight ahead, let Van Egan find the hole where he can. Got to keep those yard markers moving. Second down and three now. And Egan got seven on the last carry. He's gained 65 yards today and 15 carries. Before the Raiders put it in play on second down, the two-minute warning is given. Two minutes left to go. Oakland 24, Denver 21 will be back for the stretch run. That's how it looks in the West. San Diego, a victory yesterday over Seattle, standing at 10-5 and five with one game to go. And it won't be an easy one. The Pittsburgh Steelers are heading to San Diego after their win today come from behind in the fourth quarter over Kansas City. Oakland looking to go 10-5. and five. If they can prevail here with a three-point lead and two minutes left to play. Second down and three is coming up for the Raiders. The ball is just across their 35-yard line. End up. Van Egan looking for a run all the way. They knock him down for a loss on the play and a free ball. And let's see who has the ball. I think the Raiders fell on it. 153, an official timeout. And while we have a moment, let's switch back to NFL 80 in New York and Bryant Gumbel. Bryant? Thanks, Bryant. We're back at Mile High Stadium. And that is Tom Flores. You know, I don't think nearly enough has been said about this man. The Raiders started off slowly at the first of the year. He was the stabilizing influence. He's been so throughout the year. He's another in a long line of fine Raider coaches. Third down in a long three. Plunkett throws. There's a man going for the ball. Arthur Whittington cannot get to it. A penalty marker is down. It's going to go against the Denver Broncos. Arthur Whittington coming out of the backfield and running a fly down the near sideline was, in the opinion of the official who was right there, impeded. Really? He had a perfect angle on the play, Don. He was standing in a spot where very few people could 
could miss it if it was an infraction. Number 20, defense, first down. Back judge Roy Clymer right there. The penalty marker goes down, and so the Raiders get four new downs with 146 left on the clock. Well, that was a big penalty, and uh, you see those penalties affect ball games, win, lose, and draw. And it's not a very popular call right up here in Denver, but down in the Bay Area, they may be celebrating because if they can make one more first down, this game is history, and it's a long way to come back even if they don't. Well, it's down close to the 40 of Denver. Broncos bring all the linebackers up. They know it's going to be a run, and yet Van Egan finds a way through and hits the ball down to the 35-yard line. 35. Mark Van Egan keeps on trucking. 135 left to go in the game and he keeps the clock running and now the Broncos call a timeout. So while we have a brief pause, let's switch uh -huh. back to New York. Another update as we go to Bryant Gumble. 135 left to go here at Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado, Oakland 24, Denver 21. Second down coming up for the Raiders. They have the ball at the 35 yard line of Denver. A pass interference call on an incomplete pass that maybe it would not have been incomplete had waiting to not been interfered with but at any rate it was first down yardage on the penalty assessment remember now too John that the Bronx can call two more timeouts they have to Only stop one. the run Van Egan still working gets down close he's inside the 35 yard line to the 33 and back to New York and back to Bryant Gumbel Flores and quarterback Plunk and defensive backfield coach Willie Brown one of the all-time great Raiders and Don I it said two timeouts left on the scoreboard. However, that was wrong. Third down and two. Plunk it goes right back to the money, right back to Van Ing, and he didn't get there. The Broncos signal four, and, and you can bet they're going after it on fourth down. Oh yeah. One eighteen to go. One eighteen left to play. They don't want to lollygag too long because it is important that they can pick up the first down if they get any sort of a good play off, which would, which would ice the game. If they don't, there's still a little time left. In overtime, Cincinnati beats the Chicago Bears, so the Bengals have won two straight, and they head home to meet up with the Cleveland Browns on the final day next Sunday. Van Egan didn't get there. On fourth and one, he did not get there. And with 44 seconds left to play, the Broncos have the ball back. No timeouts, but they do have a chance. They only need a field goal to tie. Steinfurt's got a lot of room. Right down to the wire, just like we like it. Our thanks to spotters Tom Murray and Al King and statistician Joe Costanza. Steinfurt warms up on the sideline. They got to get him a lot of yards, though, before he'll be going out. Well, they've really got to get him just about about 35. Morton on first down, stands in, takes a look, has a problem, gets away, throws it in the flat. Incomplete. Don, that play took eight seconds, so you know how much time he's being... Overwhelmed. No timeouts left for the Broncos. Second down and 10 coming up. 36 seconds on the game clock. They trail by three. Morton looks, he throws, Riley Odoms is out there again. And he is down to the 43-yard line of Oakland. Clock running, 24 seconds, 23. They can't stop it, but they need to get the ball in a place where they can either get out of bounds or line up real quick and throw the ball out of bounds. Here's a real injury. I, I say real as in uh, fake. Anybody <laughs> would like to, to get one for nothing, but you can't do that in this game. And the officials just may run off 10 seconds on the clock once they start it. Let's get the guys going in the stands. See Riley Odoms being attended to an official timeout as he's down at the 45-yard line. Riley Odoms, who hasn't had a whole lot. For Denver, they are behind. By rule, we will run 10 seconds off the clock, and then the ball can be snapped. And that's the, re that's the reason if there was any way that Riley Odoms could have walked off the field, it would have been to their benefit to have yeah, him do hurt. so. Riley Odoms. What a game. 13, 12 seconds left. Morton with the clock running, looking over his lineup. It's unbelievable. It's down to seven. It's down to six, to five. Now he drops back. He ran off eight seconds. Now we have an official timeout. Unbelievable. He stood there looking over the set. Six 
seven, eight seconds ran off. We'd like to watch all of the, you who have joined us now, who've been watching. We set the clock at eight seconds. Eight. Like to welcome all of America. John Brody Mile High Stadium, the wonderful world of Disney, will be coming up as soon as this game is concluded. In most parts of the country, 10 seconds. Morton is still letting the clock run down. Now he drops back seven to go. Stands in. He looks. He throws. It's intercepted, and the Oakland Raiders will tie San Diego for first place again in the AFC West. Don, he feels a little dejected. He really has no reason to feel so. And just Wayne Osteen was the man who came up with the ball. And so, a last-ditch effort by the Broncos to get in field goal range comes up short. And the Oakland Raiders win it 24-21. And so...